Hi, and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how to make lists and tables. Before starting on discussing lists and tables, we are going briefly to discuss the difference between an environment and a command. As an example of a command, we are going to use the footnote command, which we can see here and additionally here, which makes footnotes. And we're going to look at the abstract environment, which makes an abstract or a short explanation of what an article is about. On the section about lists, we are going to both learn unordered lists and ordered lists, and we are going to learn how to nest lists. So here you see an ordered nesting, and up here you see an unordered nesting. In the last couple of videos, we are going to learn how to make tables. So here is a little example of a table. And you see here that it has a caption, which we are going to learn, and that it has several horizontal and vertical lines. So see you again in the next video. Hi, and welcome. In this section, we are going to learn about the difference between a command and an environment. So we have seen several different examples of commands before. For instance, the section command, which look like this. And common for all commands is that they start with a backslash in LaTeX, and then the name of the command, in this case section, and then they sometimes take in inputs. So the section command takes in an input in the curly brackets. In this case, it's the name of the section. And if we compile, we see, as we have learned, that we have a section which is named the name of the section. Another example of a command is the footnote command. So for instance, if I write some text and want a footnote, I use the footnote command, which starts with a backslash and then the name of the footnote command. And then inside here, I can write a footnote. If I now compile the document, we see that we have some text and then a footnote, which are assembled with a number here. And if I go to the bottom of the page, we see the footnote. So the arguments which are placed in curly brackets are non-optional. So they need to be there. There are also examples of optional arguments which are placed in square brackets. So for instance here, I can take in the number two and then compile. And now we see that the number here for the footnote is not any longer one, it's two which corresponds to the number I plugged in in the optional argument. And here we see also at the bottom of the page that instead of one, we now have two. So let's move forward to the environment. An environment is a special pair of commands, which always begin by begin. The name of the environment, which in this case is document, and end with an end command, and then inside the curly brackets, the name of the environment. An example of an environment is the abstract environment. So let me begin by begin and write abstract here. And we see here we begin by begin, the name of the environment, which is abstract, and end with end and then abstract. And let me write this is an abstract. So an abstract is a short text before an article which tells you what the article is about. So let me just compile. As you see here, we have an abstract to our article. So one mistake which is common is that we, for instance, misspell abstract so that the begin name and the end name do not correspond. And let me just say that I forgot an S. So now we see that Overleaf do not like this, and you see that it throws two errors here and here. But also, if I try to compile it now, then it doesn't look that bad, but you see here you have an error, 
And if we go here, we see that begin abstract ended by end abstract. So let me just re-render it, like spell it correctly and recompile. Another thing which is common is that you begin an environment and forget to end it. So let me just forget to end it. And again, you see that Overleaf try to warn you. So it tells you that you will get an error if you want to compile the document. But let me try to compile it anyway. So everything here looks fine, but if I go inside the log, we see that begin abstract ended by end document, which is not correct. You cannot, you need corresponding begin and end statements. So let me again just correct it by end abstract and compile. See you again in the next video. Hi and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how to make unordered lists. To make an unordered list, we use the itemize environment. As we learned in the previous video, any environment begins with a begin statement. In this case, begin itemize. And ends by an end statement, like this end itemize command. In the middle here, we see that Overleaf have auto filled out backslash item command. This is to make a single bullet point in our list. So if we try to compile now, we see that a single bullet point has been added. So let's say I want to make shopping list. And in the shopping list, I need bread. And then I can compile the document. And now we see that a single bullet point has been added with the word bread after it. To make another bullet point, I make a new line and then write bash like item. And then I can write, for instance, milk. If I now compile, we see that we have a two point bullet list, one with bread and one with milk. And of course we can iterate the process with making several bullet points like apples and Pasta. And if I now compile, we see that we have a build point list with four items, bread, milk, apples, and pasta. We can also nest lists. So let's say that I want to be extra fancy and make my pasta from scratch. And I want to have the sub points with the ingredients of the pasta. Then I can after pasta begin another itemize environment by begin itemize here. And if I now compile the document, we see that we have added a dash after the pasta. So to make pasta, I need flour and I need eggs and I need salt. So if I now compile the document, we see that we have the ingredients for the pasta with a dash in front of them. And we can make nestings up to four levels in LaTeX. The item command can also take in an optional argument, which is which kind of bullet point we want. So for instance, if I take square brackets and take a dash inside the square brackets and recompile, then we see that instead of a bullet point, we have a dash before bread. Okay, see you again in the next video. Hi, and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how to make ordered lists. To do this, we are going to use the enumerate environment. To start an enumerate environment, we begin by begin, and then write enumerate, and let me go down here and press enter. And now we see that we begin the environment by begin enumerate, and it ends by an end enumerate. And in the middle here, we have an item. So let me compile it and see what happens. And we now see that we have a single one here. So let's say I want to make a list of my favorite foods and I want to order them as well. On first place, we have pizza. And let me just compile and see that we have first and then pizza. On second place, we have pasta. And on third place, we have taco. And let me now compile the document. 
And now we see that the elements has been ordered. So on first, we have pizza, then pasta on second, and on third, we have taco. And if you continue, we will have a fourth item, a fifth item, and so on. As we saw in the previous video, we can also nest lists. So let me make an ordered list inside here. Again, we begin by begin, enumerate, and let's say my favorite pasta is spaghetti. And what we see happened here is that we have pasta and then we have a sub item, which is spaghetti. And if I write another item here, we see that we have an A and a B item here. We can also make unordered nestings. So we can also have a begin and itemize inside the enumerate environment. And let me just say that taco is good and then compile the document. And here we see that under taco, we have the bullet point is good. So let's say that I'm not too happy with it being numbered by numbers. Let's say I want to have like Roman numbers instead. The easiest way to do this is by the package enumerate. So let me go up in the preamble and import the package enumerate. And let's just compile, see that nothing happened. Okay, so what I can do now is that the enumerate environment can take in an optional argument, which is the kind of symbol we want to use to enumerate. So let me take square brackets for optional arguments, and then an I, and parentheses, and compile now. And now we see that instead of numbers, we have small Roman numerals. If I take a dot instead, then we have the same thing, only that instead of a parenthesis, we have a um, dot. If we want letters, we press an A. And if we want capital Roman numerals, we press a capital I. Okay, so that was ordered list. So see you again in the next video. Hi, and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how to make tables in LaTeX. To make tables, we are going to use the tabler environment. So let me start by writing begin, and then tabler, and let me not autocomplete, and end by writing end tabler. So the first thing I need to decide is how many columns the table should have. So the number of columns is decided inside the argument here. And we have three different options for columns. Either it can be right, which are symbol with an R, or it can be centered, which are symbol with a C, or it can be left flushed, which is symbol with an L. We can also add lines between the columns by using a pipe symbol. So for instance, if I add lines before and after the rightmost column, we can do it like this. If I try to compile now, nothing really will happen because I haven't added any text inside my table. Let me start with first column. And to move to the second column, we will do it by an ampersand, then second, and then third. If I compile now, we see that we have a really simple table with first, second, and the third column. To add another row here, we will do it with the new line symbol, which is a double backslash. So let me also just go down so it becomes more readable and write second row. And then again, an ampersand to move to the second column. And let me just do it a third time. And if I now compile, we see that we have two rows. And here the text is right centered. Here in the middle, the text is centered. And here in the end, the text is left centered. 
If I want to add horizontal lines, I can do it with the hline command. So for instance, if I add an hline here and compile, we see now that there is a horizontal line between the first and the second row. I can also add so many h lines as I want. So I can add a second one and then compile. And now we see that we have two h lines between the first and the second rows. So let me also just make more vertical lines here and make a horizontal line on the top. And if I now compile, we see that this is our table. Okay, so this was how to make tables. So see you again in the next video. Hi, and welcome. In the last video, we made this table here, but there are some problems with it. So the first one is that the table is not centered. And the second one is that it's part of the text. So let me just add some text above and some text below and compile. And now you see that the table comes between the text. So the reason for this is that a table for LaTeX is just a very big symbol. So to fix our problems, we are going to use the table environment. So to do this, we are going to wrap the tabler environment inside a table environment. So let me begin by table jump to the end and end the table. And let me just compile. And now it seems like the table vanished, but if you look at the bottom, it's added. Okay, so still we have not centered the table. So let me fix that with a centering command it's here. And if I compile now, we see that the table has been centered on the bottom of the page. Okay, so I'm really not happy with the placement. So LaTeX try to place it as best as it can, but sometimes it needs a bit of help. So I really want it to be below this text here. So to do this, I can use the H command, which means that it's going to place it here in LaTeX size. And now we see that below the text, we now have our table. There are different kinds of options here. H means place it here. T means place it on the top. And what it does now is to make it centered on the next page, which is not really on the top. So what I can do is to add an exclamation mark to kind of shout, place it on the top. And if I now compile, it will place it on the top, but on the top of the same page above the title, which is not really what you want. You can do the same thing with the bottom of the page. So let me just compile. And now you see the table is added on the bottom of the page. Another thing you can do with the table environment is to add a caption or an explanation on the table. To do this, we will add the caption command, caption, and some explanation of the table. So let me just explain by here is my table and compile. And we see now that we have a table, which is called table one and the caption I made, which is here is my table.